What is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can catch me on Twitter at No More Parties. And we're back with another episode of Thursday Night Prize Picks Prop Bets. We're going five by five, the flex play over at Prize Picks. We're trying to 10x. Week one, we went four and one. Week two, we went four and one. We're running a little bit hot. Haven't gone five for five yet. Haven't 10x yet. Hopefully it happens this week. But the pressure is mounting. You know, the, the better you do, the more the people expect. I'm, I'm feeling the heat. But I think we can deliver. <laughs> And the first bet I like over on prize picks this week on Thursday Night Football is Nick Chubb, rushing plus receiving yards. The line is 89 and a half, and I like the over. Before they posted this line, I was doing quite a bit of research on Nick Chubb's rushing yards line, which is 84 and a half, which I also like the over for. The Steelers are currently averaging 128 and a half rushing yards allowed per game to running backs this season. Joe Mixon went 7 for 82 against them. Damian Harrison and Ramondre Stevenson combined for 24 for 118 against them. And last season, the Steelers gave up the most rushing yards in the entire NFL. Nick Chubb has gained 85 plus rushing yards in 23 out of 40 career games in which he plays at least half of the snaps. And he averages 95.9 rushing yards per game in those games when he plays at least half of the snaps. In wins in which he plays at least half of the snaps and the Browns are favored by, I think, three and a half points. Yeah, they're, they're favored by three and a half points. Um, implied point total is 22 for them. In games in which Nick Chubb wins and he plays at least half of the snaps he averages 108.7 rushing yards and he's gained 85 or more rushing yards in 15 out of 20 career games in which he plays at least half of the snaps and the browns win add all of this together he's also a big play runner he gains 20 or more yards on his carries on 5.2 percent of his carries that's almost double the league-wide average and his average 20 plus yard carry goes for almost 35 yards 33.6 yards so if he gets 20 carries odds are one of them is going to go for 30 to 35 yards and then he only needs to go what like 18 for 50 on the other ones and then have like a five yard reception to, to top us off i like nick chubb's chances to get 90 or more yards from scrimmage this week and the second bet i like comes from the browns backfield again kareem hunt his receptions line is only two and I like to take the over. He averages three receptions per game in Cleveland in his career, and he's caught three or more passes in 33 out of 50 career games in which he's played at least 45% of the snaps. In week one, he played 56% of the snaps. Last week, he played 46% of the snaps. And this line is flat. It's, it's not two and a half receptions. He doesn't have to get to three, technically. And because the line is flat, if he only gets two receptions and doesn't, you know, he, he pushes it too. He doesn't hit the over. He doesn't hit the under. If he just pushes it too, Price Picks is going to bump our 5x5 five five flex play down to a 4x4, four four, and we can still win money. So we get a little bit of wiggle room here, so I like taking the over. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't catch more than one pass this week, and he catches two or more passes 82% of the time when he plays at least 45% of the snaps. This one seems easy. The next line I like is Deontay Johnson. His receptions line right now is 5.5. I'm taking the over again. He's caught seven passes in week one, six passes in week two. So he's hit that over in both games so far this season while playing 81 and 86% of the snaps. And when he plays at least 80% of the snaps in his career, he catches six or more passes at a 79% clip and averages 6.9 receptions per game in those games. The guy's a receptions machine. Trubisky's been looking at him early and often. And Deontay Johnson is a good player. We like to take the over on good players. Speed of overs on good players. The fourth line I like here is actually Jacoby Brissett, 9.5 rushing yards. And I like the over. Jacoby Brissett's not some, you know, super athlete, mega runner at quarterback. He's not Lamar Jackson out there. But he's rushed for 10 yards in week one, 43 yards in week two. And in his career, he averages 17.1 rushing yards per start. And he's hit the over on this line in 25 out of 39 career starts. You know, he, he rolls out, gets flushed out of the pocket, and has an open lane in, you know, man coverage downfield. He's going to run for a first down. You know, check. We, we hit this over. I like Jacoby Brissett to go over nine and a half rushing yards. And then the last line I like is a little bit more tentative. I think, but it's Chase Claypool, 39 and a half receiving yards. I like the under. 
It's a little tentative because Chase Claypool has seen decent opportunities so far this season. He's received the most snaps. He's run the most routes of any wide receiver on the team in both week one and week two. He's seen six targets in each of those games, but he's only being targeted on 16.7% of his routes, which is the number 67 per route target rate in the entire league, according to playerprofiler.com. And I learned my lesson last week in betting the overs on shitty wide receivers based on opportunity when I took the over on MVS's receptions line. I'm not doing it again. Claypool has turned six targets into just 18 yards in week one and 26 yards in week two. I don't think he's very good. And after aver- and after being targeted, you know, pretty far downfield the last couple years being used as a field stretcher, his A dot in year one was 13.2. His A dot in year two was 11.4. So far this season, he has an average depth of target of just 5.7 yards downfield, and they ran him the ball six times in week one. Like, he's doing things a lot closer to the line of scrimmage so far this season. The threat of him busting over this line on, like, one deep ball is lessened quite a bit given the way that his role has looked so far this season. He's he's had one incomplete deep ball. His longest reception is 11 yards. Nothing else, none of his other receptions have been over six yards. You look at his, his play log, it's short incomplete right, short incomplete left, short middle, like all of this shit just over the middle of the field, you know, dinking and dunking on the side, running the ball. Like, th- they're using him like a like a jet sweep guy more than they are like a, you know, a, a speed freak deep threat. And so I like Chase Claypool to go under 39 and a half receiving yards. And I got two honorable mentions. And I actually like both of these quite a bit. Mitch Trubisky, 200.5 passing yards. I like taking the under because he sucks. Like he's not been good this season. He goes for 201 plus in 55% of his career games, but he goes for 201 plus in just 29% of his career losses. Pittsburgh is, you know, supposed to lose this week. He goes for 201 plus in just nine out of 24 career games when scoring 20 or less points. The Steelers implied total is like 18 and a half, I believe. When uh, Trubisky's team score 20 or fewer points, so even if we give him a little bit of bit of bit of wiggle room on the, on that implied point total, even when Trubisky's team score you know 20 or fewer points, he averages 195 passing yards in those games. The fans are already calling for Kenny Pickett to, to you know get some looks. Maybe Trubisky plays like shit. And he just gets benched in this game and doesn't have an opportunity to even reach this total, even if he's on pace for it with garbage time and things like that. And the last honorable mention line I like this week is Mitch Trubisky to throw a pick. The line over price picks is 0.5 picks i like the over because this dude sucks let's make some money we're going five by five this week we're gonna hit all of them let's do it